hello, my name is Kuba Kukarski and this is The Dev Team Project, a podcast exploring methods, approaches and skills needed to build great engineering teams. Everyone's ready? Ready. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, so welcome to uh, today's uh, Dev Team Project episode, another Dev Team Project episode. And today our guest is Amy Miller. Hello. Uh, recruiter, uh, engineering management recruiter, actually, at Google. Uh, and uh, she used to work for, for Microsoft for yeah. a really long time. Uh, and I know that she also did a lot of job for like recruiting agencies and you know recruited every everything from truck drivers to CFOs um, and uh, and yes uh, Amy thank you for being here thanks for having me I'm excited good to chat with you again yes yeah, so like our goal is uh, to figure out what makes engineering teams right. really really great and yeah. I think like uh, engineering management culture mm -hmm. is definitely part of this. And For this sure. is what we would like to talk about today with you. Great. So can we start with just, you know, uh, mm, some info about about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been recruiting forever, uh, like 140 years in dog years or something. So no, it's been a really long time. Um, I've been recruiting in the industry for about 20 years. Half of that time has been pretty solidly in tech. So a couple big companies, obviously, that I've worked at. I've worked in agency. I've worked with smaller firms as well. And I've hired a lot of engineers. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of teams being built and a lot of teams uh, doing great and and so seen a lot of different flavors of it and I, yeah I'm, I'm just excited to explore this topic with you guys and um, you know it's really the leadership is so important so thanks for having me mm -hmm. maybe like we could kick this off yeah. with kind of a differences between you know uh, Microsoft and Google, oh my gosh. like engineering culture <laughs> and engineering management culture. I know that's probably like a broad topic, but it is. It is. You know, I I think um, super interesting. Really, when you think about any big tech company, um, one thing that I really appreciate about both companies that I've personally had experience with is they recognize that they're really they're engineering companies at their heart. Like the heart and soul mm -hmm. of the organization is built on engineering and it's built on uh, building and creating amazing technology and making the world better through um, products and services that that are just I mean the technology has changed so much in the last several years and I know for myself my first recruiting job I was handing people paper applications <laughs> and mm -hmm. so now being in this amazing organization and in both companies really where I've had an opportunity to hire the the smartest people in artificial intelligence and just all the the amazing stuff they're doing and so just recognizing that the engineers are the heart and soul of the organizations mm -hmm. is is huge. Um, one thing that I would say, if if we're maybe trying to compare a little uh -huh. bit, um, I do appreciate that that my current employer is really embracing a variety of sites. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just Bay Area centric. You know, that's mm -hmm. obviously a, a huge spot for big tech. Silicon mm -hmm. Valley is still, you know, a, a huge place for, for this stuff to happen. But I sit in Seattle, you know, mm -hmm. I'm up in the Northwest and I'm helping recruit in Europe. And so there's just cool stuff happening globally, which I think is really nice. And that's, that's one of the distinctions, I think, between companies that are maybe pretty location centric or headquarters centric versus recognizing that this talent exists everywhere and mm -hmm. build it where they are. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I think that's really great and it helps a lot, you know, with bringing, you know, the, all the diversity yes. uh, into the company. Absolutely. Uh, um, and if, like, we're at the subject, so maybe we could tell our audience mm -hmm. uh, a bit about, you know, Google uh, engineering management hiring yeah. uh, and, you know, how it looks and, right. you know, 
still like remembering that our audience are engineering managers. Absolutely, so, like, gosh, I'll I'll try to to do right by them. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you know, hiring managers versus hiring a more traditional you know entry level engineer, or university hiring things like that. I mean, there there's definitely some subtle differences, and I've I've hired managers at, at a few places, but I, I so I'll, I'll speak somewhat broadly, but hopefully still provide some good context. Uh, hiring a leader, they're focused on a couple of key things. First of all, a leader wants to know um, what they're getting into more so than, than it, it's not just myself. As a leader, I have a team I might be leaving. I, I mm -hmm. might be walking away from an organization that I've built and people I've managed. Uh, so there's definitely a people element to even just getting a leader to think about leaving, mm -hmm. uh, to think about coming to my company. It's like, well, gosh, I've I've hired 10 people in the last five years and I've watched them grow and it's kind of like leaving your kids, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, right? So, so that's one thing that's definitely top of mind. And then the second, I guess maybe the other half of that is, what am I inheriting versus building? Mm -hmm. So am I coming into an organization that's well established, that has a team of engineers that may or may not love having a new boss? Or mm -hmm. am I coming in and building from scratch? Am I going to start over and, and build something new? So there's all the usual stuff. There's what kind of tech am I going to work on? What am I going to build? What am I going to fix? What am I going to improve? All of those things are still very important. And I think most engineers, I hope, would agree with me on this. Like, you want to work on cool stuff. You want to have an impact. Uh, maybe it's a global, massive impact. You're going to go build Twitter. Maybe it's a smaller, like, hey, I'm building internal tools for people to sit close to me. Um, impact can look like a lot of different things, but you have all of that that I think resonates with nearly every engineer plus the leadership element, the people focus, and uh, the best engineering managers that I've been able to work with over the years have that sense of the importance of that side of their job. Mm -hmm. It's not just the technical leadership. It's mm -hmm. not just project scoping or you know driving for a particular result. It's taking a team of mm -hmm. people and making them the best that they can be. So I always want to make sure that I'm thinking about that, I'm asking questions about that, mm -hmm. and making sure that our opportunities are kind of aligning with what's important to my candidates as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe let's talk a bit like, let's say I'm an engineering yeah. leader and I sure. want to be hired by, by Google. Hey, like, let's talk. <laughs> how will the process look like? What right. should I expect? Right, like, right. Let's so, talk briefly yeah, about Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly in an organization like this, the bar is high. You mm -hmm. know, I think everyone knows that. That's no secret. A uh, couple key things that we look for are the technical expertise and aptitude and then the leadership stuff. So we kind of talked about that, but uh, we're really still vetting both sides very carefully. We, we are looking for those strong signals that, hey, this person's been an individual contributor and has been a strong engineer and, and has, has written great code, uh, developed great things. Mm -hmm. So that's important, but we're balancing that with um, the leadership stuff and, mm -hmm. and people management and growth and development. So I really, as I'm, as I'm thinking about the, the people that I'm hoping to talk with and hoping to convince to maybe enter into this, be my candidate, um, I, I, I kind of want to see both sides of that. I, I really, you know, they're both equally important. It's, it's really hard to say, you know, well, hey, I don't need this piece, I need that piece, because we really need it all. We, we need that great blend of just technical strength and the soft skills on the leadership side. And a great question is how do you evaluate those? Like how do you, how do evaluate, you evaluate like <laughs> leadership skills? You just get to talk yeah, to a person several for sure, times. For sure. How do you know? Yeah, that's I mean, that's the problem with interviewing. No matter where you are, no matter what you're looking for, no matter what the question is, uh, it's a lot of it, it it can be a bit of a leap of faith. You know, we can prove some stuff. Can you mm -hmm. write code or not? You know, I mean that's pretty clear, right? You can stand at a whiteboard and knock it out or you can't, or you can show that mm -hmm. you've built this or, or created that. Leadership is a little trickier because it is, it is a lot of um, just anecdotal behavioral type stuff. Tell me about a time when. And so I really look for those stories. You know, tell mm -hmm. me about who was the last person you promoted? What would that look like? Uh, when have you had to maybe let someone go or redirect someone if, if they weren't being successful in their current role? So we're kind of looking for um, the, 
the proof, if you will, or, or the, the situations that you've encountered, the things that you've run into um, that show us that you, you've been through it. You've been there, done that, got the t-shirt maybe mm -hmm. some scars. <laughs> so yeah, we really wanna understand your stories. We wanna kinda see what problems you faced and really how you handled them. The thought process is important too. And how do you know these are like really true? Like, Great question. You know, I think a lot of interviewing is on the honor system, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like. Mm -hmm. We're going to trust that you've done this. We're mm -hmm. trusting you to enter mm -hmm. our organization. We're trusting that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you've said, you've done what you've said you've done. Um, what's interesting with, uh, with engineering, and maybe this is a Pacific Northwest thing, again, thinking of a couple companies I've been at, it's a small world. <laughs> a lot of people know a lot of people, um, so there's certainly, you know, referrals are great, and we, we always, I, I actually encourage my candidates, you know, hey, who do you know here? Who do you know that can kind of maybe speak on your behalf or might have some insight um, into who you are? So, so that carries some weight as well. But yeah, I mean, it's a tricky thing, you know? It's a lot of it's trust. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there, I didn't watch you manage your team. I didn't mm -hmm. sit in those performance review discussions. Mm -hmm. Please don't lie to me. <laughs> And can you tell us more about Project Oxygen? Yeah, so this is a great, um, you can you can Google it, please please mm -hmm. Google it, uh, Project <laughs> Oxygen, but it's, it's a great uh, article and, and basically a, a case study, if you will, that was done that talked about the importance of leadership. So I share this a lot with, with folks that I'm chatting with, whether they're interviewing or not. Um, I think when you just think about the management philosophy here and, and what I personally believe makes a good leader. A lot of that is going to be, you know, in this in this study. So again, publicly available. Definitely encourage you you all to take a look. Um, and I, I just think it's a great kind of mm -hmm. lays it out, you know. And it, it really goes into a lot of the softer stuff around, you know, how big of a team and, and how you kind of navigate the technical stuff, but still remembering the people. And so yeah, it's a, it's a great little write up. It's kind of like a Google's. Wikipedia for uh, I think leadership. so yeah like, I think that's a good way to put it actually I, I kind of feel like I need to spend more time on it myself now I should know <laughs> it better than I apparently seem to um, yeah. but yeah I mean I and I love that it was something that was made available you know I mean it this is this is something that that I think we can all anyone that's involved in leadership especially in tech can benefit from and just you know the thought process around the importance of leaders I, I would not be here if not for great bosses so mm -hmm. they're, it's, they're more critical than we know sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, how does the great engineering manager candidate yeah. looks like? like? Oh my who gosh. Is he? Um, who, is, who are they? Who are they? Yes. Um, well, they're really nice to their recruiter. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bonus. So yeah, I think it's, it's again, it's that combination of someone who really has a, a good, strong foundation in technical expertise. You know, we, we can't minimize the importance of knowing your stuff from a, from a technical um, point of view. I, I don't necessarily need someone that writes code. That, mm -hmm. That's not, I mean, if you're managing and you're leading a team and you're driving technical direction, you probably don't have time to code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I'm less concerned about that. But I love seeing folks who have kept close to the to the technology mm -hmm. and, and are just interested in it mm -hmm. and are just passionate about it. Maybe they're doing cool stuff on the side or maybe again, not required at all. Don't don't misread me. I hope I'm not, you know, sending the wrong message. Yeah. But you know, I think it's people who have a passion for the work and people who have mm -hmm. a passion for the direction technology is going. So they're staying close to it. They're heavily involved with their team. So they're doing code reviews, they're doing design reviews, they're really able to uh, take uh, uh, maybe a, an ambiguous project. Okay, we need to go monitor comments on this. Mm -hmm. but I'll just, I'll use Facebook as an example, right? Maybe there's like a, a, a safety team or a you know a community standards type of team that says hey we need to figure out a way to 
to monitor this and manage this, make sure people aren't saying nasty things in mm -hmm. comments. So how do we apply technology to that and how do we build a team that can do that? So if I'm thinking of a leader for something like that, uh, you know, it needs to be someone who can take what's kind of a big meaty problem and here's, here's this big broad, how do we stop bad actors? And then how do I kind of narrow that down into the specific work that needs to be mm -hmm. done? I need to use mm -hmm. machine learning algorithms to apply to a specific function to search for certain keywords, whatever it might be. Can you tell how technical I am? <laughs> you are very uh, technical. <laughs> I tried, but I picked up a thing or two, but I'm no expert. Uh, but so taking those big ambu ambiguous meaty projects and turning them into technical direction. So mm -hmm. being able to say, hey, we've got 17 projects that are all gonna feed into this larger initiative. Here's how we're gonna deploy that. Here's what I need you three folks to work on. You five folks are going to do this thing. And so really being able to manage that entire team mm -hmm. and make sure that we're meeting all those milestones or prioritizing if we can't. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's had more than one thing on their plate knows that something might fall off. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's a possibility that, uh, that I'm not going to get everything 100%. So being savvy enough to recognize you know, look, there's something's gonna have to give. Mm -hmm. So this is the most important, this is mission critical for whatever reason, uh, this is the thing that something else breaks if I don't get it done, um, and recognizing where I can make trade-offs. Mm -hmm. that, that's gonna be important, I think, in any industry, certainly tech, and so for the purposes of, of an engineering manager, really being able to stand firm on, on those decisions mm -hmm. and, and being able to say, this is what's right for the company, this is what's right for my projects, and this is what's right for my team. Mm -hmm. I can't have them work in 90 hours a week. Mm -hmm. They'll leave. <laughs> but you started with, I don't need you to call, but I guess right. you, you need them to be able to call. Like you need them yeah. to be callers, like I, software I engineers in the past. For right? sure, for sure. I, I think that's a critical thing. Um, at least, you know, the, the hiring that I've done in the last several years, I would say it's, it's difficult. I certainly don't want to say impossible because what do I know? Mm -hmm. But I would say it's difficult if you yourself don't have that foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you train, teach, and guide others in it? There may be a way. I I'm curious mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You've got me thinking. I I've, heard, <laughs> I've heard stories yeah. about designers okay. uh, moving into this path yeah. of being engineering managers. Interesting. So okay. I've heard this, but yeah. I never saw it myself. Yeah, and I think the question I would ask if, if that was proposed to me, like if I get a great referral, hey, mm -hmm. this person's a designer, or, hey, this person's a former PM or something, um, great, where can we draw parallels? Where are there some relatable work that you've done some great things, you've accomplished something that's maybe on a different side of the project, and then how do we kind of turn that into an eng leader? So it's it's a great question. I think it's something I know I personally haven't explored, but you've got me thinking. Uh, but yeah, I think for the most part, the, the ones that I've seen be successful, again, even if it's on the side, even if it's just something they're passionate about, just being close to that that software development life mm -hmm. cycle uh, yeah. is, is definitely a great Background. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking this question because I yeah. wonder if this, like, if this would even fit within the Google process. I don't know. I guess the part yeah. of you know of the process for hiring yeah. a junior manager is like yeah. a technical interview and right. probably asking them. We to do, call yeah, them. we do, do we do index heavily on on technical expertise for sure. I mean, there are there are technical interviews in addition to the people interviews. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So I think you know with any with any organization with any team with any role we we want to be flexible and we want to kind of make sure we're we're casting the right net and 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 talking to enough of the right people but you know the bar is high there's mm -hmm. a technical bar in an engineering organization and you know we got to meet it <laughs> and if i'm coming from a small yeah. company like really yeah. small like a startup and oh, for my sure. team is like yeah. 15 developers yeah. and i've never worked for a bigger company yeah. that i kind of you know, people might kind of feel that, okay, I'm not fit for Google. I've right. never worked for right. such an organization. Totally. And I, I've heard this a lot. Mm -hmm. So is this true? Mm -hmm. um, I felt that <laughs> as a as a recruiter, you know, coming out of agency, coming out of small companies. Mm -hmm. uh, the company I worked at before Microsoft was about 1,200 people, and I think I hired 200 of them. Mm -hmm. So I said the same thing to myself. Mm -hmm. I will never work for a company like that. Google would never want to talk to me. 
I have no idea how that works. There's probably politics and those people are so smart and so much better than me and somehow stumbled my way into Microsoft. I still don't know how I got there, uh, but I'm grateful for that time. And you know, even the same thing coming to Google, I, I still, even after so many years at Microsoft, I felt like I'm not good enough for this. Like that's a bunch of unicorns and I'm kind of more of a donkey, <laughs> you know, it's stubborn and everything. But um, you know, the reality is like any other company, we're made up of people. Mm -hmm. And people come in all kinds of forms and experiences and knowledge and, and just everything you can think of. And so, so yeah, I, I'm proud to say that, you know, hey, my company hires the best. We have, we have strict, you know, criteria and a high bar, but we really embrace this, this diversity of experience mm -hmm. and, and people who are coming from startups. And what I love about candidates from startups is they've often had to carry a lot. They've mm -hmm. done it all, start to finish. There is nobody helping you. There is no massive infrastructure for you to rely on. And so I kind of feel like there's a scrappiness almost. And I think of myself like that as a recruiter too, like I was used to doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And I think in some ways it actually made me better at my job because when I did get into a larger organization that had infrastructure and had things to help me, I was grateful for it and I was ready to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. So I personally love candidates from startups. <laughs> yeah. I love candidates from anywhere, but you know, I think there is definitely, um, it, it's it's a different skill set and it's kind of a different scrappiness yeah, that, that resonates with right? me, totally. Mm -hmm. Sense of ownership, sense of pride in what I've done, like I built this and I love telling candidates, you know, like, hey, if we're hiring you for a specific thing, hey, here's a button, you can go home and show your grandma, like, look at that, I made that happen. You click that, that was my team, like, that's cool. So I love people from startups or self-employed or people who've, Again, even going to the side stuff, like, hey, I published 16 apps on the iOS store. I mean, I love that stuff. It's just this this innate, self-driven, mm -hmm. self-motivating kind of drive that, uh, that that I just, I it resonates with me because mm -hmm. I'm like that too. <laughs> okay, so like, let's wrap up this yeah, part of, sure. you know, four engineering yes. managers that would like to, you know, go to Google. Call me. Or just, you know, <laughs> Curious about this, yeah. Uh, and let's talk about you know cooperation between right. you, like recruiter of engineering managers, yeah. and you know engineering mm -hmm. leaders yeah. inside Google. How for it sure, looks like for sure. So yeah, I mean I have a specific partnership uh, with one of our product areas. I, I personally work with YouTube, which I love. <laughs> Great organization. Um, so I do work in that that kind of that small vertical, that that little tiny piece or whatever horizontal. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I work with that section, right, mm -hmm. of, of leadership, which is kind of small when you think about the whole of, of the team. And, you know, managers, which we, we kind of talked about early on, it's high touch. Uh, I mean, these, these folks have any number of options. All the big competitors are hiring them. All the startups are hiring them and giving them big fat titles. So, you know, there's a ton of opportunity. And so for me to talk them into uh, coming into this crazy process with me and, and considering uh, a company like this, especially when there's so much like, oh, I think I already know about you guys, or I think, you know, the process looks like something totally different because my friend said, you know, there's a lot of myths that we have to kind of bust and, and try to undo. And there's also, and, and you kind of alluded to this, about just the fear, like, can I even get into some place like that? Mm -hmm. Is that even... You know, is that somewhere I could be successful? Would they want me? And so the partnership with my leaders and my hiring managers and my team members is critical because they've been there. They're able to answer those highly technical questions that I can't. Mm -hmm. Not a technical person, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> they're uh, really able to champion uh, for our candidates and, and for our prospects, like, hey, this is a great place to work and here's why. Or you might have questions about a specific process or a specific team or, oh gosh, it's a giant corporation now, how do I, how do I navigate that? How do I get visibility if I'm, you know, again, coming from that startup that we mm -hmm. talked about and I'm used to being, you know, second hand yep. of the CTO, why would I want to come be one of 10,000 people? Well, let's talk about why, because you get to work on world-class stuff that affects people all over the globe. So my leaders 
in partnership with me are really able to, to provide some very specific, honest, true detail around that because they're living it every day. And a lot of, a lot of candidates, and, and we kind of touched on this earlier, they're smart. I mean, they, they, you're not gonna pull it, you're just, you're not gonna pull anything over on them. You know, I mean, they're yeah. talking, they're hiring themselves. They're working with recruiters in a different capacity in their own mm-hmm. companies. You know, far be it for me to think I'm gonna outsmart it. Outsmart somebody, <laughs> exactly, great word. I, I can't even think of the word, so I'm certainly not gonna do it. Uh, but, um, you know, so having my hiring managers really be partners with me is critical. Mm-hmm. It's so important because I need them to sanity check me. Am I asking the right questions? Am I looking at the right profiles? Am I kind of you know, vetting for the right things that matter to you? And then also just the credibility of having that person that's willing to jump on the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, let's, let's 15 minute coffee conversation and we can talk about some of the early stage questions. And then also, even getting through the process, even when it's time to make an offer to someone, right? An engineering manager, which we talked about early on, they care about what they're gonna work on, who they're gonna work with. I'm not the only person. They may not talk to me again for six months after they get here until they're ready to hire, right? Mm -hmm. So knowing the people that they're going to be closely aligned with, who they're reporting to, who's gonna report to them, those are conversations I want them to be able to have. And so pulling in my hiring teams and my partners is critical because it really takes all of us to make a hire. It just mm-hmm. does. I can't do it in a vacuum. I can't do it on my own. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really count on them too to, um, to you know, just be my partner. Just mm-hmm. be my partner. We're, we're all in this together. We're all have the same goal. We, we want to make an amazing hire for the company. Help me do it. Mm-hmm. And is there like a specific way that you can partner with them on nurturing relationships? Yeah. You know, oh it takes gosh, so yeah. long to, it to hire someone. It's like more than months. Months and months and months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it can definitely and take a while. So, you know, it's interesting and it, and it definitely depends on the individual's level of comfort. I, I don't think there's a one size fits all here, but I've done everything from sit with my managers and say, hey, let's look at your network. Who do you know? Mm-hmm. Who'd you go to school with? Who are you friends with? Who, who's on your kid's softball team? <laughs> you know, we get creative, right? Where, where are we yeah. gonna find this pipeline? So we'll, we'll partner on that. I certainly, as a recruiter, have search tips and techniques and mm-hmm. different things I can do to uncover information and kind of freak my kids out with it sometimes, but you know, it's all good. <laughs> if it's publicly available, I'll find it. Uh, so we, we partner together on that. And then once we have that short list or we've got kind of our, our pool of folks that we really, really want to talk to, get the manager involved. Hey, why don't you send an email? I'll help you write it. <laughs> but you know what? You're the one that's going to make this hiring decision. Mm-hmm. You're the one that this person's going to work for. If I'm a rec- you know, in, in my role as someone who gets recruited on occasion, I'm definitely taking a lot more seriously a message I get from a recruiting manager that I might work for versus just uh, any random source or recruiter mm-hmm. in another company. So I think the same thing applies, maybe even more so, uh, because, hey, if I'm a director reaching out to uh, an eng manager, mm-hmm. I got other stuff to do. I must be serious if I'm the one that's yep. making the call. <laughs> so um, it just provides like some instant credibility and yeah. like this is a real job and there's a real problem to solve and we want to talk to you about it. Definitely from a point of view of a candidate that yeah. helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's shift a bit right sure. now uh, into this topic that I really wanted to talk about, yes. which is like levels. So like oh, I know that was software, important to you. <laughs> software engineering ladder. I know some folks out there are aware of this, but mm. there are like a lot of it's people all over the place. out there yeah. that, you know, they believe in some myths about it. Right. They, you know, there's right. a lot of misunderstanding yeah. around it. So I mean, what is this all about? What is it all about? I, okay, so a couple thoughts on this. I, I'll share just personally, because as a candidate having been there, uh, I was very salty when I found out my level going into Microsoft. I mm-hmm. thought, wait, I've been doing this for a long time. What do you mean I'm a level such and such? You know, and I was like, what is this stuff? I learned very quickly that 
the numbers, I, I don't want to say meaningless. I feel like that would be the wrong word. <laughs> Um, but it's it's interesting the mental gymnastics we put ourselves through and what I learned though was that hey this actually the number is is not as important as the expectation behind it Mm -hmm. so when I came in and thought oh man I'm at like this junior level so to speak that's not what we called it but that's what it felt like to me once I got in and saw the chart I felt bad and I felt like, man, do they know what I can accomplish? Do they understand what I can do? And then when I started looking at the expectation and saying, okay, so when you're going to review me in six months, I need to be able to do, the, oh, now I get it because I was coming into a very large organization that had a lot of moving pieces and I, coming from small companies, hadn't had the depth of that experience and didn't have necessarily the knowledge of all the moving pieces within a really ginormous engineering org. Mm. So I was brought in at a level that not only was appropriate for the ramp I needed, but that allowed me to have a good first year, if you know Mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I actually felt better after it thinking, okay, yeah, they, they did have a method to their madness here. They did think about what I'm gonna accomplish right out the gate, because I'm really good at certain things. They thought about the things that I'm gonna need to ramp up on and learn to get promoted quickly, which I did. And so those things really put the entire level discussion in a different light for me. So I'm glad I got to experience it, because I think a lot of people look at it and say, well, I'm a level seven at Amazon. There's no way I'm leaving for less than a seven. That's one approach. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, Certainly, any candidate is well within their rights to feel that way. Mm -hmm. But what I would caution you is if you're getting hung up on a number or on a title Mm -hmm. or something, dig in with your recruiter or with your potential boss or whoever it is you're talking with at the company and say, I want to talk about what this maps to. I want to talk about what the expectations are of this level. Mm-hmm. Um, there are definitely external sites that you can go to. I, I wish I, I'll, I'll find the link and send okay. it to you. Um, but there there are sites where you can go to where, where folks have actually mapped this out mm-hmm. and you can pick you know, three, four big competitors, my company, my former company, and a few others, and see, okay, this level looks like this here, because the numbers are all different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> some have single digits, some have double digits, it's all over. Uh, And that's a guideline. But I wouldn't over index it on it so much without asking for more clarification. I really wanna know, okay, if you're bringing me in at that mythical six, let's say, Mm -hmm. and I'm a seven somewhere else, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What is the true expectation tied to it? How does it affect things like my compensation structure, my growth potential? Uh, What do I have to accomplish? to get to the next level, and what does that timeline look like? And so hopefully, especially as you're considering an offer and you're thinking seriously about making a career change, I never wanna make an offer that someone feels bad about, Mm -hmm. and I never wanna make an offer that is perceived as a step back. Okay. So these are important things to discuss, but I, I would really caution folks to focus on what is the impact and what is the mm-hmm. expectation. Mm-hmm. That's what's showing up on your performance review, not your number. Mm-hmm. So like, do, you, do I understand correctly? Yeah. This is actually a framework for mm-hmm. setting the expectations, right? Yeah. And you know, setting yeah. clear absolutely. agreements within the company. Absolutely, every company I've worked at that has levels, absolutely, it is specifically tied to the expectation. So mm-hmm. as, as, a, as a level five, engineer, for example, you're expected to perform certain things and you should be accomplishing certain things. And and so there's a whole performance review around at every company I've been at around these expectations. This role does these things. Did you not do it? Did you show up and get it done? Or did you exceed it? Mm -hmm. We want you to exceed. We always want you to exceed. (laughs) Exceed, That's clever. (laughs) Exceed gets you promoted. (laughs) So, you know, one thought I would would just share, you know, for anyone who's struggling with a level discussion or, you know, if if the recruiter maybe doesn't want to tell you or, you know, there's something going on that you're kind of like, I don't have enough information. Um, Just dig into the expectations. Mm -hmm. Dig into, okay, what does promotions look like? How often do they happen? And what do I have to accomplish? Because I got to tell you, 
I've done, not, not at my current company, but in a previous company, uh, worked with internal transfers. Mm -hmm. And what we don't wanna see is people at one level for a long time. So I've seen folks be impacted in the past by maybe pushing for something a little aggressive or a little higher than we might have initially been thinking and then they're there for years and years and years and we're not yeah. seeing the trajectory. So just a side thought I, I would hope everyone yep. keeps in mind, but you know, we we want to position you in a way that you succeed quickly, mm -hmm. you ramp well, and you you're starting a trajectory mm -hmm. that's gonna benefit you long term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for all the people out there yeah. that, you know, in the in the companies that, you know, they don't have level system. Right, yet. right. Why is this beneficial? Because often there are yeah. these systems for huge enterprise companies. For sure, for that sure. are really, you know, too much of a hassle, too much friction right. for, for, you know, Absolutely. smaller companies. Absolutely. You know, and I think that, that makes it even more important to really index on expectations, mm -hmm. right? I think it might be different for some startups. I don't know, but I, I, would, I would think that each role each designation probably has some kind of expectations tied to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a as a maybe an, an entry level person or a more junior person, I'm probably expected to show up, write X amount of code, <laughs> not mm -hmm. break anything, you know, and so that may or may not have a level designation associated with it, but you should know what does it mean that I've done a good job? Mm -hmm. What did I accomplish that says I, I earned my paycheck and hopefully a bonus? Mm -hmm. um, when you are looking at the larger companies, whichever ones they may be, that is going to map to a certain level. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's sometimes it's as simple as things like X number of years of experience, it may be certain education. I mean, there's different things that, that might impact those discussions. But for me, and, and every company I've worked at with a leveling rationale, it's the expectations. Can the person perform these specific functions at this specific mm -hmm. um, expectation. So is there a lot of levels just for managers? No. It's just engineering, yeah. Yeah. right? It's, it's, yeah, so. I mean, you have managers and you have individual contributors and they can mm -hmm. be at the same band. So, oh, okay. But they just obviously have a different work. <laughs> so where does the manager start in a ladder? Like which level? Um, I've seen it vary pretty wildly. I mean, there there are some companies that may have a rule that it, you know, you have to be at a certain level to be a manager. Um, it can also vary depending on on even the product area or the specific team. Sometimes there's internal rules, but you know, gosh, if it's Microsoft, it's sixty something yeah, <laughs> upper sixty. Yeah. Oh, it's so Google. <laughs> Google, it's probably at least a five, six, mm -hmm. seven. You know, so yeah. And five would be like a manager of I mean, five software developers? Or it's it, it, that, that is, it doesn't map that cleanly, okay. unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I wish it did, because that, that would be so easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could just say, here it is. Um, but there's, it, it's really more around the person. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's what, what expectations does this person match? What, you know, what can they accomplish? And that might be a smaller team, that might be a larger team. You might be managing managers, that's gonna be a higher level mo in most cases, mm -hmm. but not always, right? Okay. Because again, there, there's all these other variables that, that we look at and, and it's really just about making you successful, mm -hmm. putting you into a category, if you will, that you're gonna shine, you're mm -hmm. gonna do well and you're gonna beat those expectations and mm -hmm. get on your way to promotion. Do you think it's fine or still missing something in this framework? I, I Do you think, personally miss something? Like? I mean, I, I gotta be honest, this is, this is always, and I get the question a lot, and I know it's important <laughs> because I know engineers are talking about it. Um, I'm always really curious, and I, I, would, I would wanna kinda put the question back on, on our listeners, like, what does it mean to you? Mm. You know, if you're coming to me and saying, hey, listen, again, I'm a seven at Amazon, right? We'll use that example again. And it makes no sense for me to take a level six at Google or a level 66 at Microsoft or whatever it might be. Uh, well, why is that? You know, what, what, is the, what, what happens to your paycheck or what happens to your resume if that number doesn't match the way you think it should. I mean, it's a really, I'm curious. And I think, you know, different people have different 
thoughts on that. Um, every person has to drive their career in a way that makes sense. So far be it from me to tell somebody that they shouldn't care. Mm -hmm. um, but I know for me and, and having gone through my own kind of mental gymnastics with that and thinking I'm a level what? You know, I'm really kind of mm -hmm. being offended by it. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that I just don't care that much. Mm -hmm. so I want to beat my targets and get a fat bonus. That's what I care about. That's the number that matters. What is the number on my paycheck? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think, like I said, there there's definitely resources out there that, that will give you some indicators or a lot of research that's been done externally uh, that folks share. Um, but I, I just... I would... If, if y'all take one thing away from, from listening to us have this discussion, yeah. it's ask questions, you mm -hmm. know? Ask about impact. Ask about... How does this really matter? What does this look like internally? I can tell you, nobody cares. <laughs> mm -hmm. We don't look at that. We look at, you know, what's the scope of the work you're doing? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're leading a team of five, but you're doing something so mission critical that the CEO is watching, it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. But if you're two levels up, but you're leading a team of 10 that's just keeping something awake, I mean, that's important too. But each person's going to have a different kind of emotional currency around that and what's important to them. Mm -hmm. Gosh, you're so natural at that. Like, <laughs> at interviews, like I was just, I was just going to ask you, like, if we could leave our audience with like one last takeaway. Yes, for that's them, the one. Like, engineering <laughs> measures. Is this the one? Yeah, I know. I think uh, I, I this is this is my my takeaway from mm -hmm. working with managers for so long, um, at at a variety of places. Awesome. You have to really know what's important to you. You, you have to really take the time when you take that call from a recruiter, when, mm -hmm. when you say, you know, maybe I will answer that email or maybe I will talk to my friend that's over at that dream company. Take stock of what matters to you. It might be leading a big team. It might be working on a big meaty project. It might be not writing hours and hours and hours of code all day and night because you got to push something out. Maybe there's a work-life balance issue that you, you want to drive for. I mean, everybody's going to have their own thing. It's okay at this stage in your career, like you've made it. <laughs> You're leading teams now. You have been trusted with big, important work now. So take a minute to sit back and, and really pat yourself on the back and, and recognize how amazing you are right now at this stage in your career. And don't be afraid to focus on the things that you want in the next phase of your career. Okay, I've made it to management, leading a cool team, I'm doing really neat stuff, now what? And that's gonna be different for everybody, but as a recruiter and hopefully as your partner in getting you through the process, that's the stuff that I should be mindful of every time I pick up the phone. Every time I say, hey, there's a team that wants to talk to you. Hey, we're ready for this next step in the interview process. I need to be constantly thinking back to, hey, you said this thing was really important. You said this was the, the, the critical piece you needed in your next job. Don't let me forget that because you have paid your dues and you have earned it. Thank you, Amy. This is like a lovely note to, <laughs> to end on. Really, I had a blast. And this conversation Me was too. really, really great. I could keep talking all day, but I know I we don't know. have time for that. So. I know. We have our 40 <laughs> minutes. We try to stick it. We will yeah. uh, include the links to the Definitely. site that you, yeah. you mentioned Absolutely. in our highlights. And see you all in the next episode. Thank you. Bye. Wow. How was that? I mean, like, taking all these notes, I'm like, maybe know, I'm saying no, something it's good. It's great. It's great. It's good. I feel like it's it was so inspirational. I mean, oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad. Well, and it's cool too because I feel like it also could, like, some of it could apply to, like, any job yeah. too.